Hey guys, tonight we have a very special guest. He is one of our most nostalgic guests because we knew him way back in the day. And at that time we called him Mr. Scott, yeah. <laughs> which we did bring up to him and he was like, oh, uh, what? Right, he, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so he was our teacher like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 20 something years 20 ago. Something years ago. Listen, we won't age ourselves. Uh, and we won't age him. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, he is currently with the band Low Cash. He is living in Nashville. And he gave us the 411 about what it's like being in a band, being on tour, life on a tour bus. How he got to meet the band. Yeah. Which was way before they were a band, a big band. Then. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a really cool story. And um, he told us all about his podcast, which sounds freaking it is awesome. amazing. And you guys need to check it out. It's on his YouTube channel. If you just search um, Paul Scott Music, it has his Paul Cast episodes on it. He's just fucking cool. And you guys need to check him out. And after you watch this interview, you're going to be like, this dude's awesome. Yeah. You just enjoy. Enjoy. Every week, me and my guitar leave Music City to play and sing for a living. This crazy life on the road has led to performing number one songs on radio, TV, and stages everywhere while teaching through some hilarious and humbling epic fails. Each week here, you'll get a taste of touring, studio sessions, cover song twists, the latest gear, performance tips, and maybe step into a few pranks along the way. So come on. Let's live, laugh, listen in, and learn a little about it all. I'm going out of my mind. I can hear you too. What? Gotcha. Very cool. Well, oh my gosh, how many years has it been? uh 20 a lot <laughs> we're not gonna say that number are we <laughs> i did see you at um the fillmore oh that's right yes not one of my proudest nights but hey uh i had a few had a few not proud nights as well I, I what happened at the fillmore we won't get into that right no now. it's just one of those things yeah it was. <laughs> i will tell you about it tell later. me our cheers yes uh, <laughs> cheers so thank you so much first of all you are so welcome you look totally different uh a i'm just a little different just a little different right <laughs> I, I don't mean, know if it's a good different or bad different or what but yeah. good different good different yeah we're like he was so young when he was our teacher we didn't insane. even insane like, yeah, totally. what idiot thought it would be a good idea for me to like teach, you know? <laughs> no, you were a great, you were, you were an awesome teacher. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. I, I definitely, it was one of those things that, you know, um, it was cool to, it was, it, it was a great time. I actually, there's times when I miss it and I'm like, you know, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it was good. And you guys are friggin' talented, which made it so much more fun. We had, okay. we had a really good time. <laughs> we had a good time. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so weird how it happened and how you're here right now, because I was on Facebook a couple of years ago. I've wanted this story and she's been, I wouldn't tell me. <laughs> it's not even like, I mean, it's not even crazy, but I was like, well, you haven't heard it. So I was on Facebook a couple of years ago and you popped up as like, someone I might know, you know? Okay. And I was like, oh, I wonder what he's doing. And then right. I was looking at your pictures and I was like, whoa, what is going on here? <laughs> so it wasn't even a couple of years ago. It was probably last year. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. And then I, I was looking up, you know, low cash and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've heard these songs. That's just right. so crazy that, you know, you play in that band. <clears throat> so then. Totally at, weird and twisted. It's totally weird. And totally weird. <laughs> <laughs> so then I was at home and my manager called me and she's like, Hey, this guy from WMZQ just came in the salon and he gave me six tickets for a 
uh, concert for a band called Low Cash. And I was right. like, shut up. I shut just, up. Yeah. And I was like, what? And she's like, do you want them? I was like, yeah, I do. I said, I That's just found insane. out my high school choir teacher is in the band. <laughs> she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that, but I just thought you would like to go to that. Yeah. So I went to that. Right. And I mean, it was, you guys were great. And your opener was awesome. I'm trying to remember. His trying name. to remember who that was. Um, He's real young, real like bluesy voice. I don't know. He was real good. Okay. But, um, I had. A that few- might have been Ryan Falase, uh, who's from. Uh, I can't remember the other band that he was from. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I don't know. But yeah, so it was just so weird how it happened because I had just like seen him on Facebook. And I was like, I'm going to see what he's doing. And then my manager calls and she's like, hey, I got these free tickets to see Low Cash. And I was like, what? Okay. That's insane. Definitely going there. And um, and now you're here. So. And now I'm here. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, you know, it was it was definitely so cool to see you and 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 to have the flashback of, of all of that sort of stuff happen. Um, you know, it's been an interesting journey, obviously, coming from Virginia, ending up in Nashville, and then, you know, being on tour with Low Cash and, and, and that sort of thing, all the way through even what COVID's done to the music industry, which is, eh, eh, I'll right. get into that later. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been really cool. You know, obviously, you know, I was a teacher, as you guys know. Yeah. And, um and uh did that but i think you know the whole reason for getting out of that was i was teaching you know high schoolers how to follow their dreams in music and then only being a few years older than you guys uh, collectively had um you know a lot of students at the same time going hey you're teaching this but you're not doing it yourself you're not you're not chasing your dream we know that you you know and so that kind of hit home um after after a while after two and a half years i think of, of teaching in high schools and then uh yeah came here and oddly enough i met the low cash guys like when i very first got here and they were line dance instructors at a place called the wild horse saloon here in nashville and i was doing my own solo act at the time and so they would introduce me and they would be like, hey, and up next, after this, you learn these steps, uh, Paul Scott, you know, and then they, they would, <laughs> the curtain would open, I'd come flying out and, um, you know, do the show or whatever. And uh, I, I went in and out of record deals. They went in and out of record deals. Our, our paths sort of crossed here and there, but not a whole ton of a lot. And then I was in an out moment while they were on an in moment. And uh, you talk about like, you know, the songs, but maybe didn't know who they were. And um, they had a song called I Love This Life that was like number 40 on the charts at the time. And I didn't know the song. Um, I had I was trying to figure out what my next steps, if I was even going to have next steps because of the deal that I had not not, you know, going south. But um, uh so I got a call from their guitar player. It was like, Hey, they need somebody to play guitar, sing background vocals for them on this song on, on uh, highway uh, XM radio. Right. So, and, and yeah, so, um, so we walk in and um, I was, I was kind of, you know, I, I didn't even know who Stormy Warren was, who's like the main, like, you know, show host on that, on that channel or whatever. So we walk in and, uh do the thing and i'm like all right it's cool you know whatever uh and it's a, it's a dj i've met radio djs before and wasn't any big deal and m- my perception of the highway at that time was not real high nothing against them but i was like yeah hey, it's satellite radio do people even really right, right. i, I, I kind of had that uh, perception of satellite radio. yeah <laughs> and so i just kind of was a little nonchalant about it. we did it it went over great and then they called me later that night and literally we rehearsed for like five minutes. Like we had one run through. Yep. Okay. That works. Let's go to the radio station now. And I hadn't seen them in you know years. And so, and I had no idea that this song was going to end up being this special song and, and, and do well or whatever. So then, um, uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, I, I went home and they called me and they said, Hey, do you want to come out on tour with us? Do you want to, you want to, join up you know up with things or whatever i was like 
Nah, I'm good. I'm really I trying to. That. I know, right? I'm like <laughs> trying not to go do that right now. I'm kind of taking a little break from the music business, as as it would be. And um, so they were like, "Well, think about it." So then I thought about it for 24 hours. Then they called me back. They were like, "Did you think about it?" I was like, "Yeah, I thought about it." But man, really, the only way I'm going to do this is I've got to make like some good bucks doing this. Here's my offer to you and. They were very generous in accepting that offer. And I was like, oh, crap. Now it's really oh, hard. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so I've been doing that for almost five, it'll be five years in December. And since that time, they went from really no singles on the chart to having, I've been a part of all five of their uh, singles that have been top 20 or top and two number ones, uh, number two, a 15 and a 20. So, uh, and have been all over the world touring with them. I also became their tour manager at one point, And so manage all of the uh, aspects of, of dealing with contracts, buyers, um, all that, all that sort of stuff, you know, for venues and things like that. And uh, I've gotten the opportunity to uh, sing and play on a couple other uh, records and stuff like that too. And um, so that's, that it's been a lot of neat experiences um, and writing with them on the bus and that sort yeah. of thing too. So it's been, it's been a neat experience. Yeah. Now, do you guys, um, I mean, I guess you stay in hotels all over the world, right? All over the world. I've never had bed bugs. Thank goodness. Well, that would be scary is what I'm about to ask you. There's, I know someone who got bed bugs once, and that shit does not go away. So our drummer actually got bed bugs. No. He got it, and then they quarantined all of his clothes, froze them, and then mailed them to him. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, you know what? Just burn that shit. He's like, yeah, like, just, like you know what? I'm good. We don't, we don't really need that. Yeah. No, throw the suitcase away because no. man, it is a nightmare. No, um, the the only you know we we sleep in a lot of hotels, but um, you know the bus is probably eighty percent of where we sleep. You know, um, okay. we travel through the night, so basically, you know, we'll get together. The, a standard run will be basically we'll meet up at midnight and a random Walmart parking lot, leave our cars there for four or five days and uh, tip the Walmart employees to watch our cars so that nothing gets broken into or right. turn the cameras our way. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go out and do a run and it can be anywhere from, you know, California to Montana to Florida or wherever. And we just, we do it. We, we do a show. Um, and then sleep on the bus until we and wake up in the next city the next day, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny is when I saw you at the Fillmore, <clears throat> I got up that morning and I was like telling my mom, I'm going to go see Mr. Scott. He's in this band, you know, whatever. Mr. Scott. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. I know, like, I can't get until that right name now. out of my head. And I'm like, this is, uh, what do I? Until right now, that's what I knew you as, Mr. Scott. Yeah, you're that's like, so funny. You're the same age as my brother, so. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but what was weird is I'm telling her this and she had Good Morning America on the TV. Oh yeah. I'm like, uh, he's right there. You guys were yeah. in New York City that morning. The the T V shows have been a lot of fun. Um uh, the first time we played the Today Show was definitely pretty surreal for me because that was like my first big time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but what was weird is I'm telling her this and she had Good Morning America on the T V. Oh yeah. I'm like, uh, he's right there. You guys were yeah. in New York City that morning. The the T V shows have been a lot of fun. Um uh, the first time we played the Today Show was definitely pretty surreal for me because that was like my first big time, uh, you know. Um, yeah, so getting to meet, um, uh, why can't I think of her name, uh, Kathy Lee and, and all that stuff was like, oh my God, you're like, you're her and I'm here and this is weird, you know. Um, but I'll tell you what really stinks about those morning TV shows. You get in the day before you and – you might get in around nine or 10 o'clock and then your call time is 4 a.m. for an 8 a.m. broadcast. And you have to go in, do your sound checks, do makeup, all that sort of stuff and everything. And then by the time you actually get to perform somewhere around 9 a.m., you're like, 
No, no, I love you're... this. Wow. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah, you're half asleep while you're doing it. And then we did a, we did, um, so that was, that was live. That was a live performance and, uh, on, on TV. Um, this, the second time we did today's show, um, Chris, uh, actually did a gender reveal of his, one of his babies on air. So that was pretty wild. Um, and then, uh, when we did Fallon, that was, that was completely different experience where we got to meet everybody on the other shows. When we did Fallon, we actually recorded it and he was doing something else. So we never met him, but he like holds the CD and goes, you know, and now you guys are going to love these guys. They're, you know, here's yeah. the cash and the screen splits over and it looks like, you know, we're part of the show. Right. And, we recorded it at like three o'clock in the afternoon and he wasn't yeah. even there. And he pretended that we were, you know, standing right next to him the next day whenever he came in to record it. Oh, so that no. was a weird experience. Yeah. The crowd was there, but right. there was no show. So it was really weird. We performed for the crowd. The crowd was into it, but we never met, you know, Fallon or, or, or anybody else. So that was kind of strange. I'm sorry, Kimmel. That was Kimmel. Um, and, um, uh so yeah that one that was that was strange um yeah, and then, TV yeah. magic i'd be like oh yeah and then it? with uh you remember when um megan kelly had her show on the today yeah. show like her segment of that we did that show that one was probably the most nerve-wracking for me because we had a new single out that i was playing the guitar solo on and um uh the song was like real new and I had recorded it for the record and, um, but I had never played a guitar solo on broadcast national TV. And I, I got a little, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you guys know me as a vocalist primarily yeah. Yeah. and that, you know, while I, I, I play guitar and, and have some great endorsements for, uh, companies that I work with and stuff. Shout out to Ernie Ball and Paul Reed Smith. But, um, uh, and, and do all that stuff. Um, it, uh, you know, I, I, I've done vocal competitions and been on TV and stuff and done that sort of thing. But that was the first time that I'd ever done anything with guitar in front of that type of audience. And it was kind of like, you know. And all eyes are on you. Right. When you're the Here we go. Yeah. And uh, so don't screw it up. So. Right, right. <laughs> no, pressure. no pressure at all. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, there's there's been a lot of fun experiences that way for sure. That is no. so cool. What I was getting at earlier, and if you don't believe, it's totally fine. I'm just saying because we're called totally or twisted. Have <laughs> you ever stayed at a hotel that is supposed to be haunted or had any? Would yes. Stuff happen at any hotels that you may have stayed at since you. Do you already know this? Is that why you're asking me this question, or did you make this up? No, I just made it up. I just, I'm oh. really, I'm really interested in that stuff. So, there was a, a there's a ho there's there's two places actually. Okay. Um, there and I, I you you might have to look the names up. I'm not sure I can remember all the names, but we played one in Milwaukee, or we stayed at a hotel in Milwaukee. We, we played at the place that was across the street and then the hotel that's there, you could look it up. It's famous for being a haunted hotel. Cool. And, we okay. went, and we went and took the haunted tour. Nice. I will say nothing happened that we saw. Okay. Um, okay. But uh, you definitely got the eerie vibe, you know, whether it was through uh, everyone just talking about it or whatever, but like you got the vibe of like, this place a little different, you know? Right. Um, so I, I don't remember. I wish I remembered. Like, it's the, like one of the most famous ones in Milwaukee. So you have to look that up. But, <laughs> um, and then there's another place. What was the venue you played? I wish I could remember. <laughs> Damn it, man. Oh, another one in Missouri. <laughs> Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a big perform. It's an indoor performance hall. Uh, yeah. Why can't I? That's the thing. It, like I remember it being a funny thing. Like when I would see one of my favorite acts be on stage and they would like say the wrong city or something. Yeah. Like, What's up uh, Roanoke? And they're in right. Fairfax, you know, 
Um, and it's because you literally don't, we, we rarely spend much time in the cities that we're in. We mm-hmm. basically wake up at noon, go do sound check, go eat dinner and then take a shower, maybe work out if we're able to do that. And then it's time for the show. And then we get back on the bus and drive, you know, eight to 12 to 14 right. hours to the next place. Um, so we don't get a whole lot of time to sightsee or so we often don't remember where the heck we're at. It's that a real makes thing. perfect sense. Um, so, but then there's this other place in Chicago. I also don't remember the <laughs> name of this venue, but it, in the basement of it, it has a haunted pool. Cool. Now is an old pool from like, um, uh, the 1920s when they used to put like pools in basements of like the YMCA and stuff like that would like be this indoor pool and stuff. And it was this haunted pool. And we went in and took this little private tour of like going and it's empty. There's nothing. The pool's emptied out and people have broken in there and spray painted stuff and all this sort of stuff. And then, but like, it's weird. It's so echoey in there for one thing it's really dark flickering lights and the the whole the whole deal and um like you definitely feel like some stuff went down there and apparently somebody was like murdered in there or whatever and all right. that sort right. of stuff well, and there's sure some, a good ghost story. Yes. yeah it was very ghost story so those those are probably my only two you know things i can think of that were haunted that we've done so that's, that's cool. pretty cool haunted hotels are always cool i love haunted yeah. hotels yeah have you been to the um, Union Station Hotel? Again? Yeah, I've stayed there several times. That place is supposedly haunted. I that, that is the first time I've heard that. I've lived here for over ten years, and I've never heard well, that that was haunted. Well, get on it. <laughs> Let me tell you. Could, <laughs> yeah, right. I could be getting the name wrong, but so in room seven eleven. Okay. I think the ghost's name is Abigail. All right. The story is that she dropped her fiance off at the train station there when it okay was to go off to france for world war ii okay and then he ended up dying in battle and she went back to the train station and jumped in front of a train wow that's and quite now, a story now she's supposed to haunt that whole haunt hotel, the whole place she likes room 7-Eleven the most. 7-Eleven. I, I did not stay in 7-Eleven. I, I, I probably would have heard that story. Um, there's yeah. a great little bar in the you know basement of that. I don't know. About yeah. <laughs> <It looks awesome. laughs> but I've not been in room 7-Eleven. Well, now you know that hotel. The rooms are really cool, though. They're like 12-foot, 14-foot ceilings with nice. giant curtains and, and oh, all yeah. that sort of stuff. Though. So it, yeah, that's I mean, a nice it hotel. It looks like a train depot like it's really yeah oh yeah yeah it does it's pretty cool cool oh so red is awesome you like red that's so funny i love red (laughs) uh i have a friend at work named christine and she is like the female counterpart okay we'll call her red as well (laughs) we need to put them together or something yeah i mean they're so similar but um so tell us about your podcast a little bit so did you start it during quarantine i did yeah it was uh, i didn't even have a youtube channel before quarantine um that was just something i hadn't really tapped into you know like i said in the beginning um i kind of i'd done my solo thing up until meeting low cash and then once i started working with them it really didn't leave much time or opportunity to work on my own solo artist stuff so anything else that I did from there that was with um, meeting with people or posts and stuff like that primarily was focused on my endorsements with the companies that I, you know, use for gear and stuff for uh, touring with Loke. So um, I didn't necessarily feel like I had a need for that. Right. Mm -hmm. As you guys know, I've always been a, I like to tell stories. I like to talk. Um, (laughs) And, uh, that's so perfect. the the yeah. podcast idea was kind of natural and he, and he was like man why don't you do a podcast about music i like film let's just talk about music and film or something but what really got that conversation started was when quarantine hit i was like man i'm bored he's like yeah i'm bored too <laughs> and i was like i want to just i just want to 
cover some songs just for the fun of it, you know? And so I started messing around with the song Castle on the Hill by Ed Sheeran. It's amazing. And this cover is amazing. Oh, I need to hear it. Yeah, please check it out. Make oh, sure I will. People check it out. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I was literally, um, my story with dad is I had a couple acoustic guitars sitting around, as you can see in here, I've got- You have guitars? <laughs> Just stuff all over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I literally picked up that one on the back wall and another one in a, in a different case, and I had them in different tunings. And I, I just started messing around with that song. Just, just it, was in, it was in my head or whatever. And I was like, huh, this sounds cool. And I just started recording some tracks with it, not really planning to do anything with it at all, not even for anyone to necessarily hear it. Um, I, it was more of just I wanted to get in the studio and work on something besides low cash yeah. and not nothing against them. I just, I, you know, you do the same songs every night for five years. Right. Uh, you know, right. You, you get an itch to, to do, to do some other things. Mm -hmm. And so while I was getting that itch, um, in doing that, um, red was like, man, well, let's just make a music video of it. And I was like, what? Uh, okay. I haven't shot a music video in five years six years or more and uh yeah that'd be fun he's like because he is he graduated nashville film institute and has a a cinema camera i don't know i don't know cameras real well but like basically it's like a movie grade yeah camera and so he was like i got a camera i got a drone guy we have a castle from medieval not medieval times what is i'm it? like uh, really Fair or something <laughs> yeah renaissance fair like 20 minutes uh, away and it literally is a castle it's actually the castle that taylor swift used for her romeo juliet video. Oh, oh, and so we went and stole it for our castle for a castle <laughs> on a hill, and it actually happens to be on a hill so um uh yeah so we the whole thing started out as uh you get to scratch your itch during this quarantine for what you, what it would be like for you to direct a music video. I get to scratch my itch of doing one and I've got all this music that I just recorded kind of for the fun of it or whatever. Sure. Let's just do it. We'll just, where, what do we do with it? Well, I guess YouTube's the best place to sort of put it, you know? So we put it up there and, and got a really good response from it. Um, and uh, in fact, not, I don't want to, my, my, I have a good friend that got to tour with Ed Sheeran, who's in the music business and he saw it and he commented on it and was like, man, this is cool. I was like, yeah, Ed needs to hear it. I didn't hear anything beyond that, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm pretty sure Ed has no idea it exists, but that's okay. He's um, heavy, so. He, he, he uh, gave me hopes and then shattered them all in one sentence. But um, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, anyway, uh, that turned into people wanted to know how, how did, how was this thing made? And when I said that I did, I recorded all the tracks and red did all the video capture and editing. They were like, wait, there's just two guys that did this, you know? And, and, um, we're like, yeah, we were bored. It was quarantine. You know, <laughs> yeah. we had some time on our hands. So uh, we decided, well, how are we going to tell people about this? Let's do a making of sort of interview. And that basically started the podcast. And so that's, um, and I was just joking around. I was like, it's not a podcast. It's a podcast, you know, it's about, <laughs> and, um, and uh, so basically it just, it talks about music and film and influences on uh, musical influences for me, film influences for him. Uh, we literally, because of quarantine, had no other place to do it but um, uh, a bonus room that had already had a pool table in it that we couldn't move. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so we're like, cool, by the way. what's that? You're real good at pool. By I'm way. really good at pool. <laughs> You know, it's off the table. Off the table. Oh, I love scratch. that you know this part about the episodes. This is awesome. I don't I mean, know. You have to cool. just like fake it now, even if you get good, because that's like the best part of the beginning. I don't even. I, so that's the thing. We had to continue to play pool. At first, it was like, oh, let's just go do it in the bonus room because that's the only place because of COVID that we have 
to mm-hmm. actually make this work. But now it's like, it's part of the set. So it's like, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look up in a second. I'm hoping I can find this. He's like, I'm probably, still here. I probably. I'm still here. I'm on my phone. I, I don't even know if it'll come through, but I really want to try because it's like super funny. Uh, probably won't be able to see this, but uh, uh, after the the last podcast, I haven't even posted this on my channel yet. So you're seeing it first on Totally Yay! Weird and Twisted, um, an exclusive. Um, we'll <laughs> posted the podcast, and this guy started following me and liked the podcast. His name, ah, uh, see, it's going to be too bright if oh, I do that. Take it up further right. next to the camera, closer. Closer. There you oh, go. Got it. Go down. Yuki Haraguchi. Yeah. Professional billiards player. No! Professional billiards yeah. player. <laughs> Fuck like yeah. eight eight thousand followers. Yeah. This is a, a world pro at billiards following our silly little podcast <laughs> and <laughs> watching me play him. pool. You have to play him in a game of pool. So <laughs> and scratch I, the shit out of him. <laughs> I feel like there is a way that I need to get him to do a z- virtual lesson over Zoom or something during oh, yes. the podcast to teach me what I'm doing wrong, yeah. and uh, which That's might take bad. longer than one podcast. Well, the cue ball stays not good. On, on, on the table. Yeah. has to stay on the table. I found I it's a lot easier. Did you camera or something one time? Like, it was impressive. Oh, like, it <laughs> went right at – so we use a three-camera shoot on that, and there's so there's a center camera out here – and and it just kind of was staying stable and i hit it and the ball just went zoom like right at it and that was the that actually was the film the cinema cam i was telling you about so it would have been bad news for me oh no oh, oh. <laughs> hit the camera for sure how's that low cash money <laughs> i would turn it into no cash money exactly yes. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to share with you something real quick too. This is this is na- very much Nashville right here. If this shows, ah, uh, this is green one dark. Wow, this wow. is um, Chris Sly and Drew Baldridge are two buddies of mine. Everybody needs to go check. Chris is dropping a new song tomorrow, and uh, those are two guys that I write with. Mm-hmm. And and Chris is dropping a, a new a new single tomorrow. Uh, he was an American Idol finalist in like season six or something like that. I don't know. Um, and uh, that's what's one of the things that's so cool about uh, being in a town and why it's Music City right. is literally like your your buddies become our, our other musicians just doing their thing, you know. Mm-hmm. And throughout this whole uh, quarantine thing, We've all continued to write with each other, um, whether it's by Zoom. I've written six songs with Chris via Zoom. That's and, um, and Chris and Drew, who Drew is another artist that uh, came out with us and, and opened for us a bunch. Um, and, and he's got, he's in between deals and we're trying to get him some songs that'll get him back in, in line with things too. But um, it's a community of uh of musicians and everybody's sort of on on the same page right now even though there's you know there's not a whole lot going on uh that's that's one way that we're trying to get through this quarantine is to just try and keep in touch with each other and constantly slamming out text messages and and all that that sort of stuff but um it's weird a lot of us uh, are doing other side things you know, in addition to music, because there's just not touring. When you make, for me, ninety percent of my income is from touring. So, yeah. Uh, and we haven't toured since March January. Friday? You know what January. I mean? Yeah. March. I, March was kind of the last sort of thing. January and February, we did a lot with the USO. Did a little bit of touring, and then March it just like whoosh, shut off. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, a couple acoustic things here and there, a couple of virtual things, but <laughs> but nothing really. So. Um, yeah, so we're all, you know, just doing whatever we can do to stay alive. So I will throw this commercial out to any of your people that know, that watch. If, if anyone, if any of them happen to be musicians and are looking for online lessons or would want to be produced, uh, on, say they want to make an EP of their own, you know, let me know. Send you guys a, send you guys a, yes, send, send, send you guys a, uh, Send a message. 
I will give you another sneak uh, peek into uh, some other things. Please. We are going to uh, be releasing a new music video in about a week. Yeah. So you'll get to see that. And then uh, in the fall, uh, I'm going to take the three main music videos that I've done and uh, make them available on Spotify and iTunes so people can cool. have them that way. And I'm going to be giving away these Wild Gear brand cups. And where you see Chevy on here, it's going to have the PS logo on there. And um. then inside is going to be a Topps baseball card uh, with this ugly mug on the front. But then on the flip side of it is going to be a QR code for uh, free downloads uh, for all of that stuff. So oh, I'll be sure awesome. to send you some Wild Gear cups. Oh, your yeah. way for your podcast and yeah, uh, yeah. We'll make all that happen. That's probably going to be uh, mid fall, somewhere mid fall. And you uh, definitely, yeah, so. when all of this COVID crap goes away and you are back out on the road, you have to let us know when you're back out here because yes. we're going to come see you. Not only will you come see me, uh, your prize for allowing me to be on allowing you totally weird and twisted being on our show no 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 thank you for having me and um is uh i want to make sure that uh wherever we're at uh i don't know where we're going to be yet Uh, we're still kind of figuring that schedule out (laughs) but whenever (laughs) that's a couple hours well yeah if you can if you can get in the car for a minute um with that. and and get on out there you know uh no you guys are going to come as as my guests along with whoever if you have significant others you want to bring with you or if you just want it to be a girl's night that's fine too girl's night. well yeah okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> um you know we'll make sure to bring you guys out uh bring you backstage tour you on the bus tour you backstage do the oh meet my and greet God. Uh, thank you so all that much fun stuff and that'll be that'll be my treat you won't have to Worry Thank about a thing. You. If you get there, I'll take care of you. So. Thank you. Oh, I Lord. hope you know we did not contact you. No, that's that. not why we. No, ah, that's what Thank I like to do. So as as, as we like to as we like to tell people, you know, that's one when you're out on the road, you're away from your friends and family. Uh, anywhere from my my first year on the road with Low Cash, we were gone over two hundred dates. Um, wow! Uh, and that shows. So when you put travel on some of those being multi travel days and stuff. You know, when you're gone 250 days out of out of a 360 day year, yeah, um, you're gone a lot. So um, yeah. uh, the people when we tour in different cities, when I am able to have friends or family or both, you know, in those cities, that's that's one advantage that that we like to take it advantage of and get get some time to hang out with with people that we know, so that you become our family, our extended family, uh, yeah. you know, out on the road. So. It's, ah, it's a so cool thing. Fun. It's that awesome. That be that's very, awesome. Very Thank cool you idea. so much. Yeah, no and, worries. Um, yeah, hopefully our podcast can help you. Yeah. I mean, you're already like, your podcast is like good. I know. You're, you don't need the help, but uh, you don't, we need the you help. You don't need us. So we no, really like, no, no, no. You know, the thing of that I have, I'm new to this podcast thing. I mean, the, um, the, the thing that I'm finding out is, you know, I, I'm learning all the wrong things to do. So I'm getting a lot of those out of the way, you know, <laughs> and then, and then I'm finding out, you know, if you can just keep it on a schedule and make it interesting for people, mm-hmm. um, I've done them too long. I've done them too short. Uh, maybe not too short, but I have done them too long and, and, uh, or, or whatever. And, um, you know, there's been some times where I've planned out what we're going to talk about. And there's been other times where I've been like, we're about to film and I got, I got no idea what we're going to, what's going to happen here. Let's just turn on the camera and see. Sometimes those are the best. (laughs) Sometimes they are. Sometimes those are the best. You know, we've had some guests on, like we had um, David Howard Thornton from, I think it was him from the terrifier. I don't know. It's like a, yeah. Yeah. So we were talking to him and he's like, you know what? You guys aren't just like, asking me questions that you have written down and it's like he really robotic. We, we, just we were just we just it. like most yeah. of our interviews we just like wing it. Right. We don't have it, a bunch it, of questions. We just have conversations. Right. Because if you put too much pressure on things, we find that it turns out bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, we can't redo this. Yeah. yeah so exactly. We just kind of fly by the seat of our pants and wish for the best. Yeah. And I mean it's fun. I actually I've had 
a couple in-person guests um and i haven't i've gotta i gotta get a get on the game with you guys and and uh get some zoom zoom call action in with some people and get some guests on there um i i've 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 got an idea well i, I i'm giving you all these exclusives I love it. um uh <laughs> that uh that we're shopping right now for for the podcast and that is to do a, a traveling podcast. And what oh. I want to do is I want to, I want to bring some love and some life to the musicians here in Nashville. And uh, we're either going to bring it to them by, uh, by way of a traveling studio, or uh, I'm going to take them out on a boating experience and uh, we're going to make the podcast on uh, aquatic and, uh, and we'll shoot it out on a boat. That's, 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 that's the real cool hopeful idea. one that we're shooting for. And basically, I want to give all the Nashville musicians that I know in my circles uh, from all the bands that we tour with. Because when we go on tour, you know, it, in country music, it's rarely, you, you know, you, you don't really have just one act that goes out and does it. They're mostly festival type shows where there may be six to eight different artists on the card starting mm -hmm. from two and all the way up until, you know, midnight or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, one of my favorite festivals is called Tortuga Fest down in Florida. And uh, it is the craziest thing. There is a stage over on this end, a stage over on this end and about, I don't know, three or 400 yards in between each stage. So they're pretty far apart, you know, a few football fields apart, all on the beach. Wow. And, but the way that it happens is somebody performs here. And while they're performing, the other one's setting up mm -hmm. on this stage. And, and people, it's like a, the biggest tennis match you've ever seen. People are like, <laughs> you know, back and forth in between the two stages. And then on each stage, there's a circle. The, the, the deck is a, a rotating circle and it's cut in half. So the front half of the U is the band performing out to the people. Mm -hmm. And then on the back half of the circle is the next band setting up. So you literally I rotate. No and, way. And swirl out to perform and then swirl off to exit the stage so they literally can get about 20 acts in a day of you know major capacity in that so in that sort of festival aspect you know you get to hang out with everybody from up and comers um like ray lynn or somebody like that and then in the night you know hanging out with kenny chesney you know, I, I, I'll never forget, my, my mom won't be too proud, but um, we were parked next to Kenny Chesney's bus and, and, and he was busy talking to somebody else. And when Kenny parks, he, he puts out a whole tiki bar lounge next to his bus, right? And okay. were, uh, yeah, imagine that, right? And so all these people are waiting there and it's the open bar basically, but like, nobody knew what to do with all of the different types of rums and drinks and ju and pineapple juices and all stuff that was there. It was kind of like, um, yeah. <laughs> so I may or may not have a little experience in some cocktail formulations. And uh, <laughs> I self, uh, you know, made myself the, the Kenny Chesney backstage tour bartender and all of a sudden, I was just mixing and, you know, <laughs> pouring people cocktails and stuff for Kenny. And Kenny's like, hey, what are you, what are you doing? I was like, man, I'm, I'm – he's like, people, you know, they can come get their own. You don't have to do all this. I was like, man, people are really into these Mai Tais I'm making right now. And uh, your blue chair rum's just rocking it. And he's like, man, go ahead. That's, that's great right there. And uh, so I became his bartender. You know, I weird. Love it. I mean, that's but, a story for you. I know. That's amazing. You tell your grandkids that. Yeah, right? I, I became Kenny Chesney's bartender. 
But uh, um, oh yeah, I mean when you put it like that, it's like yeah, right, it doesn't sound, nearly, it doesn't sound yeah. nearly as good. I didn't. It didn't get me invited to the Islander, you know, or anything. But that's okay. It should have. Uh, right. But uh, no, I share those stories because that's where you meet a lot of the other players and band members and yeah, you know, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So uh, during this whole quarantine time, you know a lot of artists and a lot of band members have been asked to do things for bringing hope and light to the whole quarantine thing or whatever, but not a whole lot of people have done a whole lot for the artists and band members who are doing things for other people. Exactly. Um, So that was kind of my idea with trying to make this traveling podcast or whatever, if it happens um, to just try and reach out to to these musicians and kind of lift them up a little bit let's talk about their story let's play a couple songs together hang out on a boat for a minute and and let people see uh, you know the the backside the beat the the backside story to what you know what's really going on and 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 what what life is like for them you know right now and what it's like on the road for them as well so hopefully that will hopefully that will happen we'll see i think it's genius keep us updated usually people are drawn to things that are different because there's a thousand podcasts that do this. There's a thousand podcasts that do this. You're thinking of a different angle. You're thinking of the back end and you're doing something fun and different. Mm -hmm. And that's, what's going to attract your audience. Yeah. See, you guys have it down. You know what you're doing. I mean, well, apparently you do too, because that's a brilliant (laughs) idea. I'm like, well, I don't know if anybody's going to do it. (laughs) We're we're trying. We're trying. You're welcome. (laughs) (laughs) So I have a question for you. I, whenever I am a guest on a podcast, I like to somewhat sometimes interview them. Yeah. So um, what made you start your podcast? And so, um, about two and a half years ago, I had a podcast called Vodka and Ghosts. Okay. Um, we were known as the Vag Girls, which sounds dirty. On purpose. <laughs> yeah. And our new podcast like, is twi- Totally Pop. Weird and Twisted. Yeah, I mean, yeah I mean, it's, it's pretty much yeah. the same title. But that's okay. You know what? It gets, <laughs> it gets, look, it gets us noticed. It right. does. Oh, yeah. And it kind of goes, it kind of goes with our sense of humor and our- Of course. Kind that's of our vibe. I like so, it. I like it. So that podcast was, it was taking off really fast. Okay. And it was awesome. It was like, <laughs> we were Very on the top 500 in the comedy section, like wow. within months. Oh, and days. there was like 30,000, you know what I mean? Podcasts That's on that. Awesome. Yeah. But then life got in the way and we started slowing down. And then we were like, yeah. you know, in the top 500, then we were in the top 1500 and then we were off the charts and we just ended up, it just what didn't work. I'm in the top um, no hundred right now, but that's okay. top no hundred. <laughs> so then earlier this year, Katie and I started this one, and she's not going anywhere, or else I'll tie her to a chair. I don't want to go anywhere. This is so much fun. But we talked to so many cool people, and yeah. you're probably my favorite. Oh, see. My it's favorite. always fun to talk to my favorite to somebody podcast I've been on. That you know. No. What's that? It's just. Anyway, what were you going to say? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. You know, I, I subbed in on her other podcast a couple times. Okay. And, you know, you see, you're getting an itch and you get that high. And you're like, man, what an adrenaline rush. And it's yeah. so much fun. And one day she was like, we should start our own podcast. And yeah. I was like, twist my arm. So we just started thinking of all these ideas and started brainstorming. And then it was like one day it all just kind of like fell in our lap and we just started rolling. And then it was like, things just started coming together, coming together, coming together. And then it just exploded. And we're like, let's do it. And it's, things just keep happening. And so we started out with this one idea of what we wanted it to be. And then we were like, let's talk to somebody. And now the next thing you know, we have all these interviews lined up and we're like, awesome. who are we? And how did this happen? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's really cool. I even told her when I, when I, I was like, I might have sent Mr. Scott or Paul Scott. I'll stop calling you that. I just think it's, <laughs> she was like, do you remember Mr. Scott? I was like, I just our choir teacher. At this point. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and she was like, yeah. And I was like, 
She's like, we're going to talk to him. I was like, I, I sent like, him our what? podcast. Like, <laughs> why a choir teacher? Why an all? Well, no, because, because I didn't know. And then she's like <laughs> filling me in on all of this stuff. And I was like, shut up. Nah. <laughs> and so it's like, she's giving me like the lowdown. And I'm like, And what? now I feel like it hasn't been that long since I've seen you. It's just so weird. It really has yeah. worked. You yeah. look, the fact that we're all talking right now is just like it's pretty. You insane. look younger Crazy. now than you did when I was like fifteen. Oh, see, I'm like, that, what's now happening? you just became my favorite person. You all just in, became you mine. Know. Like, I don't you know, know what's what? happening right now. <laughs> you know what, Paul? We talked about this in private. <laughs> I wasn't gonna actually say that to your face, but uh, I mean, you. I but you know what? We were younger than two, and yeah. You know, well, so, but now we look older than you, which is kind of bullshit. <laughs> I know. I'm like looking at us in the in the camera, and then I'm looking at you. I'm like, what? I really what is there? Uh, you're being too kind. No. I will. I will, I will you're say backwards, like Benjamin Button over here. <laughs> <laughs> if I was only so lucky. Um, no, uh, it's you know I will say that's one of the things about the music business that I think has been an enjoyable part is um uh, what's that aging backwards yeah aging backwards that's what i'm trying to do right we're in the wrong city we need to go to nashville (laughs) it's the south it's the weather it's the water um, when when you uh continue to try and grow with music as opposed to say i only do this and lock into this thing like if i'd have been stuck in like mid 2000s country music and just yeah. regurgitated that year after year mm-hmm. i probably would look and feel and 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 act different you know but i think the fact that we have tried to continue to grow the fan base from keeping who we have but also continue to bring in younger fan base to it as well Mm -hmm. um yeah it it encourages you to act in a certain way have a certain energy about it and just make it about the interaction and the relationship and then you know you kind of adopt other people's energy sometimes so oh yeah we know that got young groups of people out in front of you and you're out performing you you kind of forget you know, oh, I'm a little bit older than them. You know, <laughs> and uh, I could have taught you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, kind of, kind of thing. And and it becomes about man. There, there's such a cool energy to today's youth when they feel the freedom to be out. Maybe it's their first concert. Maybe it's their fifth concert or their hundredth concert. But they just love what you're doing and to see them sing back the words to, you know, your songs and stuff like that is just a a really cool vibe that keeps you wanting to be part of growing up people into what you do, but hanging on to people that have been there for a while. And I think I I've always said, I think, I think youth comes from your, uh, your, just your energy in right. in life and i think that that exudes way beyond uh, willie nelson looks like he's about 800 years old uh, but I mean, he has right. one of the most youthful personalities of of anybody you would he could go hang with anybody on any tour bus and you know you know and just fit right in it's, right, it's yeah. pretty crazy but it has to do with you know an energy of a person i think mm-hmm. more than anything else so um, and you're definitely in a unique profession to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so many of my other friends, you know, just they're from just nothing but sheer job requirement, you know, we either put them in a polo or a suit or something. And that's the, and for me and my personality and what I do, that's like the scariest outfit yeah, to put right. on. That's not you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, kudos to them for being able to do that and be professional and, right. and all those sorts of things because the world world needs all of that. Um, for me, uh, th- that would be constraining mentally as yeah. much yeah. as physically to, to have to do that. So, um, you know, they got to play their role in what they do. I try to hang on and – play my role in this as long as I can. So. <laughs> cool. Podcasting is an amazing outlet. It is. So, it is. In fact, what's, what's funny is when we're done with this one, uh, I actually am going to go shoot mine. Uh, oh, okay. 
I've got a, and I'm, I'm shooting, shooting that. And then, uh, they doctor it up and, you know, make it, make it look right. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> yeah, how that goes. yeah. Is Brad there right now waiting for you? No, no, no. I, it, it's, it's, it's in a little while, but, um, uh, so they, um, we're going to do that. I'm also going to be, uh, putting out some live streaming of some acoustic shows that, uh, nice. uh me and one of the, the camera operator is actually a fantastic musician and audio engineer, but, uh, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to be putting some stuff out on some live streams too here soon. And it's just neat how the podcast, I'd never even thought that that would be something that I would do, but it kind of has become the hub of like the weekly deal or whatever, you know, and then it gives a platform to, uh, basically just discuss all of the other stuff. Cause a lot of times, as a musician, you go and do a show, but you never have the chance to explain it. And a lot of people have a lot of questions about how certain things work or do. And some podcasts may be more interesting than others. Sometimes people are like, no, oh, that's not for me, you know, tune out. Well, yeah. Other other times they'll be like, oh, that's totally what I was wondering about, you know, right. and, and want to be tuned in and find out about. So we're looking to, like I said, for the music, we're looking to advance that to Spotify. And then probably first of the year, we'll probably try and get the podcast on Spotify thing too and try and make that happen and put it in audio format or iTunes or whatever it goes on. I don't even know what a podcast goes on. I just, I just shoot it. And just message us. We'll, we'll get you guys will walk me through it, right? Get you there. Yeah. You just need a host and you can just blast it to all, all yeah, different, we'll get you there. All different podcast sites will have your RSS feed and you'll be everywhere. Yeah. So basically what you're telling me is we're going like, to we're, we're gonna have to do this more frequently so that I can make sure. Yes that you know we are helping each other out right so you know anytime <laughs> this is so fun we don't want to keep you from your podcast but don't forget to send us all the links yes please i will send you all, all the links promote. and uh you guys promote, promote promote send me all your links let, definitely let me know when this is uh you know going up and all that sort of stuff and um and uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just cross promote the the heck out of everything and yeah. make everybody have a good time. It'll be good. Oh, I think we froze. Are you guys frozen too? Oh, oh, oh there! Oh my you gosh! Are. I was like, no! <laughs> All right. One of, those, one of those ghost things. You brought one of those ghosts into our podcast. I know you did. It's possible. <laughs> we have heard someone talk to us in this room. Have you really? Oh, yeah. That's it, wild. It was one time, and we didn't know it was going to happen, so we have no idea what, what it said. Yeah, it was literally, we turned off every electronic, and then we hear this voice, and we're like, of course, when everything is off and nothing's recorded. And nothing recorded. Oh. They are very smart and sensitive to recordings, for there sure. There you go. Right. Yeah. They know how to handle all that stuff. Well, I'll well I out for comes, creepy things and let you guys know about that next time we talk. Yeah. I want all the creepy things. All of it. <laughs> And tell Red High from us too, even though he doesn't. I, he's going to be so excited that he was mentioned because I love him. Yeah, he's yeah, so he's, cool. He's like he's, super he's chill. He's like way way he's, chill. He's super chill. Uh, yeah, and that's a good way to put it. That's I mean, a, that's yeah. I couldn't really. Think of that's his just, vibe twenty four seven. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> never too fast. Never too slow. Well, sometimes too slow, but just never too fast is basically <laughs> the way he operates. Yeah, it's all. We'll good. tell him hello from us, and hopefully, we'll get to talk to you again sometime. That sounds awesome. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. And if you have any questions, whatever, when you're ready to get out there, just let us know. Yeah. Awesome. All right, you guys take care. You Bye. Too. Bye. Peace.